champions. How you going? We've got a Randall RD45 from the Diablo series. Getting a bit satanic on us there. Uh, the main quest with this one was to see if it can be converted to 240 volts mains input. So it has a sticker on the back. Oh, silk screening on the back, I should say. <clears throat> and it marks the different uh, voltage possibilities. So I couldn't find an accurate schematic for this one. I found one for the RD50. But there's no guarantee, you know, that they're anything anything like each other. So this is usually pretty promising that it's got a universal primary transformer, um, which means you can just rewire it to suit the, the mains, make a mark here, make a mark because the fuse rating will be different. It'll be half the half the um, current, so two amps instead of four amps, because it's twice the voltage, so that makes up the power equation. So I'm going to crack it open and that way we'll know for sure if we can convert this thing to 240 volts safely without having to get a new transformer anyway. Alright, so we've cracked it open. Well, we'll take the back cover off and the first thing I've noticed is uh, looking at the pair of Ruby tubes, 6L6. Um, that one looks okay. A little bit of fading of the getter, getter flash. Which indicates it's it's probably pretty old, probably uh, the original valve. But the other one, no vacuum, or no getter anyway. She sounds pretty rattly. So at least we know we're in for a new pair of uh, 6L6s. Now he said uh, just like give it a check and service as well. I don't think he's even powered it on because um, that is the, the 120. 120 volts that it's set up for. Uh, so we'll we'll go over the whole thing and check check over and see what's required to make it make it uh, sweet as. First thing we'll do before we even take the chassis out, check the fuse, and it looks intact. And it is four amps indeed, 250 volts, fast blow. F4, yep, so that's to spec. Just give it a quick continuity check. So that's, the mains are still intact. I dare say with the loss of vacuum though, the HT will be gone. If there is one. So we've removed all the screws holding the chassis in. Let's make a bit of room for ourselves. We'll gently slide this out. You know, just be aware that a lot of amps will have um, foil on the bottom. This one doesn't, which is curious because it's a high gain amp. But uh, they'll often have foil on the bottom of the uh, the cabinet there, and that's for shielding. And the little cage nuts. We'll uh, we'll rip it and tear the foil, and you'll end up with little bits of foil everywhere, just waiting to short stuff out. So try to sort of lift it as you go, uh, just in case that's got that. All oh, right, so bad news for the customer. It turns out that this transformer is not uh, reconfigurable for 240 mains. It's only got two wires going to the primary, and. That's it. So it's just got the single winding. We can't do anything with that. So I'm going to have to have a look around for a replacement transformer. Uh, I don't know if we're going to find one exactly for this model because it is a little bit more of an obscure model. It's not like your most common amp. So we might be able to find something similar that runs a similar uh, configuration of outputs and also has the other windings to suit the low voltage supplies which in this thing looking at the regulators is plus minus 15 volt and we'll just have to check um, currents and stuff and we'll maybe find one that's got similar screw patterns but otherwise uh, we might try and track down the actual 240 volt transformer there might be some floating around out there in the meantime we'll check the fuses they look intact 
one indeed is. That one is. So it's quite possible that that uh, valve lost its vacuum in transit and the amp hasn't been switched on since. So uh, that's probably why the HT fuse is intact because generally if you lose a vacuum in a, in a valve, you, uh, you blow the HT fuse as well.